What's going on? It's Berkeley Moses, solid as a b-ball, continuing the summer around U Sports. Um, lucky to have U of T guard Evan Shad Um, Thanks for coming on, Evan. Appreciate it. No problem. What's going on? Good, good, good. Um, do you want to give a little bit of a background of, of who you are um, and how you got to U of T? Um, maybe a brief history, say, maybe grade 11 to your first year. Um, kind of walk, walk us through that process. All right, so in grade 11, I was going to Northern, Northern Secondary School. I don't know if you heard of that. And then I transferred over to Central Tech. And from Central Tech, is just down the street from U of T. And then Coach John, I was talking to him back when I was in grade 11 at Northern, but that was the only coach I was talking to at, in grade 11 because Northern is a little school. And then John came to a few Central Tech games. We played at U of T a few times. And then he was the first coach to tell me he wants me on the team for sure. So I just, my dad wanted me to go there as well. So I just yeah. it. Nice. What's your major? Kinesiology. Okay. Proper, proper. Um, you mentioned that you, you transferred from Northern to, to Central Tech. Um, what was involved in, in that decision? I was playing, so grade 11 AAU, I was playing for Peoples. And then the Peoples head coach, uh, he was playing, he was coaching at Central Tech. And we're playing against Central Tech during the year also. So we all knew each other from the downtown area. And then my boys were going over to Central Tech. So we all just kind of teamed up and went there and had fun. From my own coaching experience and, and being around basketball these last few years, uh, a lot of the younger players I've talked to, they, they are, they're being public schools and they have a desire to either go to a prep school up here or um, a prep school in the States. Do you, would you say that the prep schools are, are what they're cracked up to be? Did you feel that you got the exposure that you were looking for from going to the prep school? I think for my situation, with Central Tech, Central Tech was amazing for me. Like I already had a good relationship with the coach. I knew all my teammates because we're playing from young, grade eight, grade nine. And then everything was just fall, fell in place. And also the competition level was higher. Everybody was, uh, the teams we were playing were better. Yeah. More coaches were coming to the game. It was, it was definitely a, a good transition to make from public school to prep school. Yeah. Would you say with the, the arrival of prep schools in Canada, let's say within the last five, 10 years, you think it's done a lot to improve the game up here and the quality of the basketball? I think Canada, it was always on the rise. And then with prep school, I guess it puts, gives a lot more exposure and, and I guess less people will like quit ball basically. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. So I think it's a lot better. Okay. Do you find the, um, this last question on the prep schools, do you find that the recruiting at prep schools is getting more competitive um, now than, than before? Uh, I don't know. I actually, I'm, I have no idea. I think some people have their connections. They'll get into their prep schools, but maybe for somebody with no connections, it might be difficult, but yeah, they'll find you if you if if you okay. put it to work, right? For sure. What was the um, the biggest shock going from high school to your first year of university basketball? Um, what would you say maybe caught you off guard or something that you underestimated? I think uh, the strength that was the biggest jump for me, and everybody in university is, is a man. And I, I didn't take a fifth year. So my first year, I started out, I was 17. And I'm playing against 22, 23, 24 year olds. And uh, it was, a, it was a, a little adjustment to make. And you just have to start lifting. Yeah. How would you say your game has improved since you started um, at, at U of T? I think I, Ever since I came to U of T, my handle got a lot better. Uh, I've always, I feel like I've always been patient, but I even got more patient. 
and then as the years progressed, like I kind of uh, learned like the better plays to make and like yeah. the left, risk. like you don't always need to make plays that are high risk. Yeah. High reward, you know, you could, you can make simple plays and, and then when you get your confidence going, that's when you can start. You don't have to always do, do, uh, do the most. You can yeah. let it come to you. What, would you, are you satisfied with your, your, we talked before and you mentioned that this is your, your fourth year of eligibility coming up. Um, are you satisfied with your, your leadership status on the team? Are you satisfied with where you are as a leader on your team? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm in a good position. I think people like will look at me and stuff, but I also think I need to improve as a leader and, you know, yeah. be a little more everything, more vocal, more, like example, and you know, there's always room for improvement in that area. 100%. Um, speaking of improvement, um, we, we've had the, the the pandemic over the past 16 months. Um, things have been locked down. We've all had to, to make adjustments. Uh, was there anything that you wish you would have handled differently um, looking back over the past 14, 15, 16 months? Um, with relation to basketball, academics, anything you, you wish you would have done differently? I think, no, I don't, I don't think I have any, any regrets. I think I did everything to the best of my abilities. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. hundred percent. How have you picked back up with your training? Uh, we just started lifting at U of T, that's it, about, and then we'll see what happens with the gym. But with lifting, we've been going pretty often, maybe three, three times a week. And then I do my other lifts at my house just to, you know, like the little stuff. Yeah. Work on over there. How have you been maintaining your shot and your handle? My shot, uh, I just try to keep going to runs and there's gyms here and there. Yeah, the secret runs. Yeah, secret <laughs> runs, secret <laughs> gyms. I yeah. probably spent, I spent a lot of money on runs, so yeah. I, I guess it's an investment. Yeah, that's good. How how are you? How's your body? How are you feeling injury wise? I feel good. I've been working on my on my legs more, working on my core, my upper body. I've I've always. Like when, when I was younger, I was always doing shoulder press and pull-ups and stuff like that. Yeah. I've been maintaining that. Just trying to keep improving as a whole, get less, uh, get more durable, hopefully avoid more injuries. And a lot of, um, I've been focusing on kind of like being ready to play like both games of the weekend. Yeah. yeah. At, at the highest level. Cause okay. It gets hard after the first game. You have yeah. to come back and yeah. I want to be able to be as effective in the second game as the first game so we can okay. have the best, best opportunity to win. Yeah. Is that something that, that you've noticed uh, as throughout the course of your university career that those Saturday night games, it's tougher to get your legs under you, tougher to get the same win that you would have on, on the Friday night? Mm -hmm, for sure. On the road, especially too, if you're going – we get like, let's say we go to Nipissing, yeah. get on the bus for five hours, play Nipissing, and then get on the bus for like one hour, two hour, go play Laurentian. Yeah. It's uh, it takes a toll. You have to, you have to be for like, once you're in the moment, whatever your body is, then it, what your body is like, you can only do the work before. Yeah. Do any work during. You just got to be prepared for it. A hundred percent. Do you have plans to play um, after UFT? Are you seeking a professional career? Of course. Uh, it's always been one of my dreams and my goals. Uh, I haven't really looked into the process or anything, but hopefully to, like, we get closer to it, I could find out what uh, steps I need to take. Yeah. So is there any extra steps now that you're taking for that preparation? Um, Try to tailor your game in a certain way um, to to be an asset on a professional level. For sure, I, I I'm trying to be a lot more a lot more dynamic. Like when I don't have the ball in my hands, 
like I feel like there's I was at runs and stuff I was work, been working on like how can I like impact the game without me scoring the ball and yeah stuff like okay. that just, yeah there's always a way you could be a winning player and yeah. I just trying to be more of a winning player okay yeah you just kind of tailor your game more of a would you say you're trying to become more of a true point guard yeah I guess so I just all around like get my teammates involved I've been trying to do that more and then also when when my teammates have the ball I try to just move around more than before because since I could shoot it I'll pull pull the defense towards me and I could just put them in a better situation to make plays for themselves. Which teammate, um, are, are there any that come to mind that you're really looking forward to getting back on the court with? Um, someone you think, you know what, like I think we're just gonna we're just gonna vibe out this year. We're gonna have that, that good connection. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get back on the court with uh Steven, that brother from last year. Sorry, well, I missed that. That's, a, that's Eric's younger brother from okay. two years ago, actually two years ago. Yeah. I'm excited. And Aki, I've played with him. And Aki's been injured, so it's been like I've never been able to play a full season with him. Yeah. And then everybody else, I'm excited. I just want to play with whoever. Have you seen anyone from the rookie class or from the class of new recruits that, that stands out? We're getting this guy from Germany, but I've never seen him play. He, yeah. played, he played for Bayern Munich, so uh, he, I guess uh, I'm, I'm expecting a lot out of him. Okay. Yeah, that's a good look. You guys had a lot of close games in, in, in 2020, um, like a few games within five, six, seven points where a few rebounds don't go your way, a few missed balls don't go your way, and – that's you know. Next thing you know, you're you missed the playoffs by by two or three games, right? Um, what what would you what would you say it's important to closing to closing some of those gaps to to get UFT to a point where it, it's one of those teams that we talk about as a consistent contender? I think we just got to keep building our trust, like defensively, offensively. Like when it gets to the last four or five minutes of the game. That's when every possession counts, you know? We have to sacrifice for the best shot on offense. Like, everybody has to be on the same page. Like, trying to get to the basket, try to get a layup. If it's not there, kick out. If they don't have it, it's okay. We got to – we'll try again. We'll keep going. And then on yeah. defense, we got to just trust. Like, if we pressure up, the next guy's going to be in the help. If it kicks out, the next guy's going to be there. Like, we always just got to keep pressuring. Yeah. And uh, trusting each other. Do you think U Sports will be able to recover from the pandemic in terms of the hype that it had before? I think it should. Like it is. It's a really high competition league. Like, yeah. There's a lot of high level players. The coaching is great. The uh, it's physical. Yeah. It's fun to watch when, especially when it gets gets close games. Like oh, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's good basketball. I, I think it just needs a little more exposure and yeah. And then we're we'll get on a better track. Okay. Yeah, I feel if this season goes through with the, the East and the West conferences, if you can kind of get through this season, have a season, it'll start to pick up momentum again. Um you can see the social media presence is starting to to build again and it's been pretty consistent over the last couple of years. So that's one thing that's helped. All right, yeah, hopefully, like, I always feel felt like um, the OUA, at, at least, it didn't get, doesn't get the credit it deserves. Like, out of high school when I was coming to U of T, yeah. I underestimated the competition level because all everybody wants to talk about is D1, D1. Yeah. When you come to the OUA, you're like, okay, everybody's human. These guys yeah. play basketball. These guys put up shots. These yeah. guys do. It's... Yeah. It's the, basketball. That, that ball moves, though. That ball moves quick, man. It's not a... It's not a joke. You know what I mean? Like, it's... Um, yeah. it, it rotates, man. Like, it's not... It's, it's fast-paced basketball. 
Yeah, like people understand the game. It's yeah, like I can't like I can't go on enough about it. Yeah. I found the pace to be I think my from my own personal the the D1 guys they're they're clearly a bit more talented. I find a lot of the bigger guys go to D1. Like the six nine, six ten size dudes. So the game tends to be a bit more sl- slower from, from what I've seen. Right, the- right, right. The- I agree with you. Like the guard the guard competition is in, in the OUA is high level. Like yeah. a lot of the guys transfer back from D one. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of good players. There's yeah. a, lot, a lot of good players. Every team, every team, like you can't take a night off. Like, yeah. You actually gotta play your hardest every day. Yeah. So hopefully there's a bit more parity this year. Um, we have a few more teams keeping up and being more consistent. Um, it'll it'll make for better basketball. All right. Yeah. And then even like watching the, the team USA last two games, like they're yeah. losing games. Like it's basketball. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, and um, can't remember the gentleman's name. There's a dude from um, on Team Nigeria. Apparently was in the um, yeah yeah for U Sports. Yeah, he's he's been playing crazy. I think, like, I think he's NBA. Yeah. Then, yeah. I think he's supposed to get a look with Denver, apparently. So. Yeah, I saw him with I saw him with uh, OKC. Yeah. Uh, like an Instagram post or something. Yeah. Hopefully he he goes and then oh, more doors can open and then yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and then even too with Tanner and Cadre and. Even with with JV right now, um, doing some of the things he's doing within Canada and then going to this, going overseas, it's been it's been well represented. All right, yeah, CBL is big too because you see the players from the states coming here, and then yeah, you could see like people compete. You compete. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And then uh, was a lighthearted, uh, new lighthearted NBA questions. Um, Who's the NBA player that you try and model your game after? Um, I like I like Steph Curry, Ravan Lee. Uh, those those have been my okay. two favorite players from this past season. At yeah, least. and then every year, like somebody else surprises me. Like I just lo- like love their game. And, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll go to the gym, I'll try out some of their moves, and then if in the game, if I'm confident enough, I'll pull it on me. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you think is winning the um, NBA Finals this year? I'm hoping the Bucks will win because I've been talking a lot about them. Yeah. Like, the ones look good. Like Chris Paul, he really wants to win. So, yeah. Yes, Booker. Both teams are talented. Yeah, yeah, it's been a good series. It's been a real good series. I thought Bucks were gonna pull it out, but it's looking like Suns in that pace now. Yeah, I think it's gonna go to seven. Hopefully, yeah. it goes to seven, and then maybe we can see a game winner. That's true. Oh, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. <laughs> if, if Bucks win, you um, have Giannis for MVP. Yeah, Giannis, Giannis. Like everybody wants to hate hate on his game. Yeah, but I don't. I don't like that because people hate like. It's like the same thing with Ben Simmons. Like, oh, for sure. Yeah. Like he's not shooting it. If you if he shot it, you'd be like, why is he shooting it? Yeah. Well, not, he he shoots it. You're like, why is he not why shooting it? Shooting yeah. It? Why is sure. he not driving anymore? So. Yeah. Like just relax a little. Yeah. <laughs> think with some of those guys, just about hit it, hit it when you're open. You know what I mean? If you're sure. wide open, just kind of hit it or whatever and expand the floor. But I mean, Giannis is giving you thirty points off of twos. So I don't know what else people want from this guy. So. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. even like Giannis, he's trying his absolute hardest, like sprinting up, going for every rebound, yeah. going to the offensive rebound. Simmons, he's guarding, he's guarding like Lillard and like those type of point guards for every game of the season. Like, yeah, it's, it's a big deal. It's crazy, man. Anyway, I'm gonna let you go. Let me stop the recording. Um, we can uh, chop it up for a few minutes. Thanks for watching this interview. I appreciate you guys. Uh, I need to start saying this, subscribe and hit the like button. All right, peace.